I have a kind of a question about that. Sure. So assuming you don't have access to table tests, you don't know anything about them, you're just seeing them squat for the first time, mm -hmm. how they decide to self-organize and kind of perform the squat, could mm -hmm. that be some insight into like their compensatory strategies that they use and sort of stuff you can't or would be able to see on the table but don't have access to at the moment? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. The, the, the thing that I would say, Corey, is that, is that what you're going to use with a complex movement, uh, like any complex movement, so a squat or a deadlift or, or anything that involves multiple joints moving at the same time, especially against gravity, um, you, you're not going to be able to maybe answer all the why questions, but you do have a comparator to play with. So if, if I did no take, I don't need table tests to, to take somebody into the gym and train something. I can just say, do this, see what happens. And then I alter um, either through a, a cue or I change the load or I change the position. And then I just see what happens. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think, I think people get way too carried away when you're, when you're taking somebody into the gym that they have to have, you know, all these umpteen table tests cleared, you know, to whatever they're, they're considered normal is before you can take somebody out and exercise. And that's just not even remotely close to true, right? Again, if we, if we always consider the, the person as, as their, their minimum viable performance, right? So here's how you perform today. And if we can move people closer and closer to whatever we perceive as, as being better or, or ideal under a specific context or circumstance, then, then I'm totally okay with that. I don't expect things to ever be perfect for anybody and I expect them to evolve. There's not one right way. There are many. And again, we have to appreciate that in people.